Welcome to the Bible says this, what say you? Psalm 33 and verse 4, the A clause says, for the word of the Lord is right. Now, in this special little meeting, I want to speak to you about uh, the last, the Bible says this, what say you, that we aired, dealing with Christian persecution. The video have been removed because it is too graphic. Uh, it shows a young lady who was literally set on fire and burned to death. And uh, so uh, that's a little bit too graphic for uh, uh, the, the medium. And so they, they took it away. Also, it is reported that the young lady, her treatment was due to her having killed a taxi driver and stole so stolen something. Well, when I when this video was sent to me, it was reported to me from a very, very, very reliable source, a source that I believed then, and to be honest with you, I believe now, that the young girl was murdered. She was treated, she was killed, lynched by the village because she would not denounce Christ. Well, I don't know which story is true. As you know, I was not there. I went with what was told to me. And, uh, and as I said, I'm like Paul, I believe it. Uh, but uh, uh, we appreciate the standards of YouTube and we go along with that. But let me say this, my friends, around the world, Christians are being killed. Christians are being persecuted. ISIS have destroyed many of the sacred sites uh, that existed before they came into being. They've literally been blo uh, blown up. The, the, the resting place of the prophet Jonah, for instance, it, it exists no more because they, 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 they blew it up. We're living in a time well, you got to really believe what you believe and you got to know what you believe. So let us continue to stand for Christ. Let us pray for the safety and welfare of believers around the world. And let us always keep in mind that we here in America, we who name the name of Christ, we are not immune from the suffering that many of our brothers and sisters are going through in the world and as the spirit of antichrist and the spirit of secularism and we see all of this anarchy taking place in the streets and as chaos is growing and this anti-christian uh, sediment is taking place in our society there's no telling what persecution may come our way my prayer to god is this lord if the day ever comes where i have to join the ranks of the martyrs, where I have to resist unto blood, striving against sin. God give me strength not to chicken out. God give me strength to do as millions, if not hundreds of millions of martyrs have done down through the years. They chose Christ and went home to be with him rather than to live having taken it all back. God bless you. Thank you very much. Hello, welcome to another episode of The Bible Says This. What say you? Psalms 33 and verse 4, the A clause says, For the word of the Lord is right. Now, my friends, today's presentation is different uh, and I tell you, I've never done a, the Bible says this, what say you, with a warning. But I have a warning for you today. This uh, particular segment may not be suitable for little children. Uh, it may not be suitable for those who are squeamish or you're very sensitive because I'm going to show you something today uh, that uh, we're trying to get this word out and uh, I want to show you something that is quite ugly but real. It happens every day in this, in this world in which we live. Christians are being persecuted at an alarming rate. And yet people are being warned to Christ and these people are getting saved like the Bible says. If you've been keeping up with this ministry, you know that my last uh, uh, presentation, our last offering was entitled Idolatry. And I was accompanied by two women of God, uh, Patricia Lester and Yvette Thompson. These are ministers in the gospel, missionaries in the church of God in Christ who 
who at one time in their lives sang on the world stage with the likes of uh, Michael Jackson, uh, Gladys Knight, and, and the list goes on and on and on of A-listers. Uh, in the music industry, in the R&B uh, genre, and yet when they met Jesus Christ, they walked away from it. They told Gerald Levert goodbye. They told Eddie Levert goodbye. They told the whole industry goodbye. And they are singing for Christ, serving the Lord, and doing the things of God. And I juxtapose that to what's going on in America today in the church world where we have Christians, Christian worship leaders, Christian ministers, Christians who are auditioning to be a part of the world, singing worldly songs on a worldly stage, hoping to win a worldly concert so that they can sing worldly music while at the same time being worship leaders in various churches and many of the churches are supporting their efforts. If that is not a case of the falling away of what is, if it's not a case of standing aloof which is what the word falling away means, to stand aloof from the Christian, traditional, orthodox teachings, to, to, to stand away from Christ so as not to incur uh, any persecutions from the world. Now, uh, this thing that I'm about to show you, this footage I'm about to show you, the, the first thing that comes to my mind is, is 1 Peter chapter 3. You know, 1 Peter was written to the believers who were going through an intense time of persecution, and he was encouraging them to stand their ground for Jesus Christ and to not, to not allow the persecution to cause them to give up. And he says something that is so important to the persecuted saints there. He says, concerning the saints who were persecuted, he says, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. And I love this. He says to the believers, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Now some have uh, just totally ripped this to shreds by saying Satan's not a roaring lion, that is as a roaring lion, that the devil, that Jesus pulled his teeth. Well, that's, that's, that's. I said Jesus. That is not uh, proper exegesis to, to interpret the passage properly. It is warning us that Satan is vicious and as a roaring lion, he's walking about trying to find the weak, the vulnerable, those who are paying no attention, those who have no discernment, and he, he wants to pounce on them, attack them, and indeed destroy them. But the Bible says this. He says, whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. A source of encouragement for true believers is that we know that other believers are suffering the same fate. We know that as we stand for the Lord, we're not standing alone, but other believers are standing for Jesus Christ. They love Jesus Christ also, and they are incurring the wrath of the Lord, and we suffer through together. We're going to suffer with him, and we're going to reign with him. And I'm encouraged when I run into another like-minded brother or sister who, who believes uh, the same way we believe, who believe in the inerrancy of Scripture, who believe that Jesus Christ is the only Savior, who believe that once you get saved, uh, a good friend of mine, Bishop Wayman Burton, said this. He said, he's a preacher, I believe this. Once saved, always saved to those people who always want to be saved. I agree with Brother Burton 100%. When you run into believers who know that, that Jesus is a keeper, if you want to be kept, and, and if you stand your ground and want to be kept, even though we go through, yet the Lord is keeping us. And I know that my brother or my sister in the Lord are around the corner, up the road, over the river and through the woods, who is suffering the same for, for taking the same stance we're taking, it is a source of encouragement as we protest and we fight for the unborn, as we fight uh, for marriage, as we fight for biblical morality, knowing that other believers are suffering the same things. It is an encouragement and we keep going. Also knowing that other believers believe that Christianity is the only true religion is a source of encouragement. 
But my friends, nothing is more discouraging than when you turn on the television and you see those who claim to know Jesus Christ and because they are actors, movie stars, athletes, because they are people who are auditioning for, I don't know, a record deal with, with the voice. People who have just basically, they're just basically publicly denying the faith. And now we have a brand of Christianity that allows you to publicly deny the faith, that, that allow us to be excited about having preachers preach to us who have denied the faith, who will say to you, I don't preach against sin, and, and uh, I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord, but doesn't, doesn't believe that Christ is the Savior of the world. And we're embracing these people, and we're saying it's all right. And many of you, of you who are watching you at, 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 on your cell phone at home, you're secretly voting, uh, hoping that this person or that person stay on and we're being entertained by believers who are who are who are part of the falling away well I have some footage to show you today to share with you about a young girl 16 years of age who would uh, would will never get a chance to audition for any worldly uh, record contract who will never be in a Hollywood movie who will never do a, a love scene. Tell you a little bit more about this girl. She probably, at the time, uh, that the thing that I'm about to show you happened to her, she probably could not find the book of Genesis in the Bible. She, I'm sure she couldn't find the book of St. Matthew. I am positive that she probably would not have won any theological or oratorical uh, debate or she probably wasn't a good quota of any scripture. The truth is, this girl met Jesus Christ. She went to a church service. She slipped and went to a church service and met Jesus and went back to the village where she lived. And apparently, either someone saw her leaving the church or she did what Christians generally do, those who really get saved, they tell somebody, Romans says, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Well, she accepted Jesus, and they told her to deny Jesus. And this young 16-year-old girl, did I say 16? 16-year-old 16 uh, Indian girl, she gives her heart to Jesus Christ. The villagers tells her to deny Christ. She refuses to deny Christ. And I want you to see what happened to this little girl. Again, I warn you, this is not for the faint of heart. It's not for children to see. I got this from a pastor who got this footage from a preacher in the area. It is authentic. See what happened to this Christian. And I'll join you at the conclusion of this segment. Well, what do you think? I wonder where does 1 uh, Peter chapter 5 and verse 9 with the way with American Christianity, where are her brothers knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world? Wonder where are her brothers in American Christianity as we audition for the world, as we sell out Christianity at the drop of a hat, as we put our vote behind people who are for the uh, murder of the unborn, as we march down the streets for transgendered rights, as we join in with those who have redefined marriage, as we declare that lifestyles that the Bible calls an abomination, that we call them alternative lifestyles, and that we should, uh, we should tolerate them, and as we constantly cower down and we give ground. You churches out there that are afraid to even display a cross in your church, we're, we're, we're moving away from Jesus Christ. And while, while we are running away from him, how did it make you feel to see this little girl, this little 16-year-old? And by the way, um, 
She's not a missionary. She didn't have a deaconess license. She hadn't been ordained. She didn't have a title. She doesn't have a district. She's not a superintendent. She doesn't have, have a jurisdiction. She's not an auxiliary anything. She's just a little 16-year-old girl who actually met Jesus. She really met him. It makes me wonder how many of us have really met him. Because I, I hold no illusions that the majority of people who are watching this right now would have denied Christ and, and, and you would have said what many preachers are saying now. Jesus died for us. He don't want us to die for him. Christ died so we wouldn't have to suffer anything. And yet there are Christians around the world who are suffering and who are dying. Don't get me wrong. I thank God for America. I thank God for our Constitution. I thank God for freedom of religion. I thank God for living in a country where we have uh, protections, where we can practice our faith freely. Um, and, but it's going to change. But to the degree that we have the freedom, I praise the Lord. But my point is, should not we take advantage of the freedoms that we have and live for the Lord and walk upright for the Lord? You know, it reminds me of something in my time's up uh, that I read where you remember the rich man who died and the poor man who died and the rich man lived good and the poor man had leprosy. The dogs came and licked his sores and they both went to the same place. And uh, they opened their eyes and one man was in hell being tormented by the flame and the other guy was in another compartment in the same place called the bosom of Abraham. And, and this place, captivity was shut down after Jesus' resurrection. But this was said to the rich man. Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. I wonder when it's time to stand before the Lord, and the rewards are given out, and people are being blessed, what will we get from the Lord versus the rewards that that little 16-year-old gone girl received? Now the Bible says this, what say you?